Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things you missed in I Am Groot. Hey, don't give me that look. Don't think you're getting at us by being cute. What, why are you handing me this? What is this? For this list, we're looking at the references and Easter eggs in the MCU's latest Phase 4 series. Did you spot any of these? What did you think of I Am Groot? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Disclaimers Unlike most MCU titles, I Am Groot doesn't have any juicy post credit scenes. Unless you count Baby Groot's drawing floating in space at the end of Magnum Opus. To make up for the lack of extra content, the creative team behind this animated series added disclaimers in the end credits, something James Gunn is known to do. They're meant to be funny, but also turn out to be informative. The end credits for Groot Takes a Bath tell us the name of that mysterious multicolored creature that Groot makes into a scarf. In the disclaimer, it's referred to as a Gangalorean squirrel bird creature. Details are scarce, but maybe the Gangalorean will make another appearance in season two. <coughs> Number 9. Alien on Board Baby Groot gets to star in his own spooky sci-fi thriller. Well, sort of. He gets up to investigate a strange noise aboard the Ravager's Quadrant. <sighs> Various clues lead him to a translucent, shape-shifting alien called an Iwa, which is visually similar to the water tentacle in the Abyss. It takes the form of Baby Groot, which he does not find okay. But instead of fighting, they do a dance-off because of course they do. The Iwa may have outdanced the sentient tree he was mimicking, but it's our miniature hero who gets the last word, or three words. In a total Ripley versus the Xenomorph Queen move, Baby Groot ejects the Iwa into space. Number 8. Yaro Root in the first short of these mini Groot adventures, we see how he managed to break out of his pot. Next to him, you can spot a familiar plant. Yes, it's the Yarrow Root, the extraterrestrial plant Nebula desperately wanted in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Though she's repeatedly told it's not the right time to eat it, in the end, Nebula finally gets her hands on one. Well, hello, boys. It's not ripe. Actress Karen Gillan actually improvised this fan favorite line. Baby Groot doesn't indulge in the food source, instead choosing to chuck the plant at the bonsai. But like Nebula, it doesn't work out so well. <laughs> Number 7. Vilus Baby Groot isn't the only adorable creature in this series. We get to see a few fluffy white bird-like beings with colorful little tufts of hair. These are Vilus, the avifauna native to the forests of the planet Bearheart. They're first seen in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 when the Milano crash lands on that very planet, though they don't really do anything other than chill in the trees. Unfortunately for Baby Groot, one particular Vilu proves to be destructive. The little creatures are also featured on the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout ride at Disney California Adventure. You can see the animatronic Vilus as part of the collector's collection. They're cute, but watch out. According to James Gunn, they can be quite vicious. I am Groot. <laughs> Number 6. The Gruns In The Little Guy, Baby Groot stumbles upon a civilization of miniature blue creatures. These are an alien race known as the Gruns, beings who are able to convert solar energy into concussive blasts using their antennas. The Gruns first appeared in Giant Size Defenders Volume 1, Number 3 in the 1970s. Here, they're blue, but in various comics, they're other colors. Next to them, Baby Groot is a giant, something he enjoys a little too much. looms over them, and just his voice is disastrous to their tiny community. But in the end, he does give them sustenance, albeit accidentally. <laughs> the 
Grunds are overjoyed, some even brought to tears like the weeping Grandma Grund. Number 5. Tape Deck The first scene of the series opens on a sleeping baby Groot. To the right of the frame, we can see a small stereo, an essential for the oft-dancing sapling. With no Drax in sight, he's free to get down as much as he wants. And in another shot, we get a glimpse of the Milano's cool tape deck. We're assuming Quill's awesome mix volume 2 cassette stays in heavy rotation, but in this particular scene, Baby Groot is too busy and unleashes his rage on a bonsai to bust out any sweet moves. <laughs> Number 4. Book Cover While out and about on the quadrant, Baby Groot takes a minute to relax on the toilet. The book he reads is interesting. The first image is instantly recognizable, Thanos. Then there's a bird's tail feather and another appearance by a Vilu. <laughs> the fourth square shows a purple banana. Baby Groot will later squash a real purple banana. The title of the book is written in Cree, and when translated says dumps happen. Obviously, this is the Kree's version of the classic Everyone Poops. <laughs> Number 3. Family Tree In the last short of I Am Groot, Baby Groot dabbles in arts and crafts. He collects items from around the ship, including little glowing tubes, the Anulax battery stolen by his pal Rocket in Volume 2. Count yourself blessed they didn't kill you. You're telling me. <laughs> you want to buy some batteries? <laughs> <laughs> he also uses one of Star-Lord's jet boots to weld all the pieces together. <laughs> totally not dangerous at all. Baby Groot's completed magnum opus is a drawing of the We Are Groot moment at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy, when adult Groot sacrificed himself to save his new galactic family. We are the drawing shows all the Guardians wrapped in Groot's large tree limbs. Number 2. James Gunn Cameo Guardians writer-director James Gunn offered up his sweet dance moves through motion capture for Baby Groot way back when. But for this series, he lent his voice. When he goes to investigate a strange sound on the ship, Baby Groot grabs a smartwatch to use as a headlight. At one point, he accidentally activates the automated voices. Gunn is credited as wristwatch, so it's unclear if he did all three voices. But the second one sounds an awful lot like him. You have walked 300 steps to know your horse. Can't find any workout history. You'd be forgiven for not catching this one. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Quill's Backpack Back in the first Guardians of the Galaxy film, we met a young, earthbound Peter Quill. Remember his Jansport backpack? Maybe not. But it shows up again in I Am Groot. We know it's his since it has the same patches and pins, including one for NASA. There's also one of the ghosts from Pac-Man, which we already know Quill is a fan of. Baby Groot borrows Quill's bag as he's making his masterpiece. He takes out an issue of ALF number 4, a Marvel comic featuring the titular furry alien. You can get it if you really want. This issue is from 1988, the year Quill was abducted from Earth by Yondu. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.